Here are some key lessons from the very well-written book, Building a Story Brand. One of the key insights from this book is that your customer needs to be the hero of the story, not you. So this is what most companies do when they're crafting stories, is they try to position their brand, their product, themselves as the hero of the story who comes in to rescue the prospect or customer. But in reality, the center of the universe for your customers is them. They're the protagonists. They're the ones who are getting up in the morning looking at themselves in the mirror. So really, what you need to do is position yourself as the guide who's going to help them achieve the satisfying answer, the solution to their problems. Because their stories, the customer stories, are much more important to them than your story. So you need to talk a little bit less about yourself, take a little bit of a back seat, and put the customer front and center as the protagonist. Another key mistake that people make is their marketing is too complicated. There are so many details, there are so many pages on their website that people end up just drowning in the noise. So the quotation here is, if you confuse, you lose. And people buy the products that they can understand the fastest. So what that means is you want to be simple and you want to be predictable. You want things to be obvious. So for example, when people are creating movies or shows, it's often very clear who the villain is. They put dramatic dark music, the villain is going to be wearing different colored clothing. It's very obvious. That's what we want. We want people to know what to expect and we want it to be simple. It shouldn't be some surprising, confusing, vague experience that they have when they're hearing your story. So what you want to focus on is how your offer is going to help them survive and thrive and conquer their challenges. So to give an example of this, the painting industry is going to have these websites that are going to be very confusing. There are going to be ads talking about all this non-essential details about what the painter does. Uh, but you could simply have a picture of someone painting and just say, we paint all kinds of stuff, get a quote. Incredibly simple. So what this does is it just breaks through the noise. Instead of going through all the nuanced details about the different things that you paint, you can just say the very simple, uncomplicated message, we paint all kinds of stuff. Get a quote. So you're calling them to action after explaining what it is that you do. And that's really the essence of what these storytelling elements are going to do is craft a very simple message, easy to understand message. And that's really the benefit of storytelling. So when we look at advertising strategy, there are different choices of what to do. You could tell a story, but that's really only one option in your arsenal. Another option in your arsenal is just to say, uh, here's the main benefit and here are the various features that prove that we're able to achieve that benefit. But what story does a really good job of is taking complicated things and simplifying them down to a simple story. But if what you're selling is not that complicated, uh, in my personal opinion, you may not need a story to sell it. So how do we simplify? Well, we do it through various elements of a narrative. So an example here that is going to fit a lot of stories is you have a hero who wants something, needs to defeat someone to avoid a tragic ending and achieve a wonderful ending. So you see how simple that is. You're taking all the nuance out of it. You're taking all the details out of what you offer and you're simplifying it down to the story. And what you really need to do is remove anything that doesn't serve the plot because that's just noise. Now, in a moment, what I'm going to do is walk you through the framework from the book that goes into the detailed elements of what goes into storytelling. And this is called the SB7 framework. So number one, you have a character. Two is the character has a problem. Three. The character meets a guide who gives them a plan and calls them to action that helps them avoid failure and ends in a success. Okay, so let's go into a little more detail about what these various elements entail. So we have a character. This is your customer. It's not you. It's not your brand. It's not your product. The character has a problem. 
And typically what you want to focus on is some sort of internal frustration, not an external issue. And meets a guide. So that's you. That's your brand. That's your product. That's your company. Who gives them a plan. So this is a clear path that takes away any confusion. And that plan is going to involve basically two things, an agreement and a process. And calls them to action. So there are different types of calls to actions. There, there are direct ones and there are transitional ones. So a direct run one might be something like book a demo, give a free consultation, uh, get a quote, that type of thing. And then there's transitional, which would be something like a webinar or an ebook or a free guide. That helps them avoid failure. So this is going to be the cost of not acting and ends in a success. So this is going to be how you're able to change the life of the character of the hero of the story. So some key questions you want to ask is, what is stopping your customers from getting what they want? And I have some examples here from Shopify Plus uh, where we're able to explain what the key challenges are. So uh, one thing that's getting in your way is that legacy enterprise software is broken. There's something inherently wrong with it. In the world of e-commerce or commerce in general is changing, it's time to change with it. So a, another key question to ask is, what will the hero's life look like if he gets what he wants? And so often in my copywriting, I like to reference Shopify because I think they do a very good job of storytelling. And what does this particular customer get at the end? Well, Jungalo improved conversion by 12%, sales by 61%, and customer retention by 26.5%. Branding is basically simple, relevant messages that we can repeat over and over. Uh, so an example of where I'm doing this is I'm just repeating the phrase, Decker the marketer, something that is going to get ingrained in people's minds so that whenever there is a need for marketing, I, my personal brand immediately comes to mind. So to keep it simple, what we can do is we're going to apply the grunt test, which is like a caveman grunting how simple it is. So number one, the first part of the ground test is what do you offer? Number two is how will it make my life better? And three is what do I need to do to buy it? So you could apply the grunt test for something like a landing page. Is it clear what you offer? Is it clear how this is going to make the prospect's life better? And is there some sort of clear next step or action to, to buy it? Another key thing is you need to stop using insider language. So this kind of vernacular that confuses people. An example of this is in photography. Avoid terms like depth of field and instead simplify it down to take those pictures where the background is blurry. Very easy to understand for anybody. Another key thing you want to embed in your stories is called the story gap. It's the gap between the character and what they want. Uh, this is going to really set you up for success because by demonstrating what's been separating customers from their desirable outcome, you're going to help be um, the guide who helps them overcome that. So examples of this is I frequently talk in my marketing about how you're leaving money on the table by only having request a demo ad. So a lot of people, the only type of marketing they run is very aggressive attempts to get sales meetings. And the only calls to action are going to be request a demo, book time with me. So what I'm positioning the problem as is you're being too aggressive with your marketing. And to be successful, you need to focus on things that are not just these aggressive direct response sales pitches. So there are basically three types of problems that customers face. And by talking about the different problems that customers face, you're going to generate more interest in your brand, in your products, in you. So the first is external problems. And this is usually what companies focus on. Uh, but internal problems are arguably more important in your marketing communications, but they're all important. So the first is external. So these are going to be things like having a leaky pipe, having termites, being hungry, needing a new car. But the underlying internal problems are going to be things like self-debt, self-doubt, intimidated by technology. And an example would be embarrassment about an ugly house. So 
if you realize that that's the internal problem people face, you could create an advertisement, an email, et cetera, that says something like paint that will make your neighbors jealous. So you're appealing to their internal problem, not just the external problem of needing to repaint their house. And by showcasing that level of deep empathy and the different layers of problems they face, you're more likely to get the sale than any old painter. And the third is philosophical problems. So this is something greater than you, something that provides deeper meaning, something like saving the environment, saving the world. And we see that a lot of uh, companies have been very successful catering to that philosophical level of problems. So for example, Tom's Shoes. You're not just buying shoes, you're also providing charity for people that don't own shoes. Now, one of the key elements of the story is to have a villain. This is the root source of your problems. So an example of this might be something like high taxes, not frustration. So we want to get to the real root of what the problem is, which is the high taxes, not the symptom, which is the frustration that you're experiencing. And that's what the villain is. Now, something to keep in mind as you're thinking about the problems that your prospects face is that customers tend to buy solutions to internal problems, not necessarily the external or philosophical ones. Talking about those other problems is helpful, but it's not really what gets them to open their wallets. So let's walk through an example. So in Tesla, we have the villain, gas guzzling inferior technology. The external problem is you have a need for a car, now, the internal problem is wanting to be an early adopter of cool technology. And then you have the ph philosophical problem of helping the environment. So all of these are going to be drivers of what encourage people to buy a Tesla. But really, it's the internal one. It's You want to have that, that cool all-electric car. That's, that's the most important one. And then these are also elements that uh, go into the marketing. The fact that you just need transportation and the, the also the supporting justification that you're helping the environment, uh, whether or not that's true in actuality. Now, in the story, you're the guy. You're the person that is going to help them make sense of their problems. And you're going to offer encouragement and tools that are going to show them the way. And to prove that you are the guy, that you're acceptable as the guy, you're going to use certain things like testimonials, statistics, awards, and logos. Logos being uh, like high-profile clients or customers that have worked with you. And as the guide, you're going to call them to action. So it's not just talking about their problems, but it's also getting them to act. You need to get them motivated enough to take action. And with a lot of brands, they think that they're overselling, but they really aren't. And that's why it's important to repeat yourself over and over. Uh, so one thing that I'm very focused on in advertising, for example, is looking at the frequency of the ads. Have I shown people the ads enough that it's actually getting inside their heads? So let's go through some examples of calls to action. would be offering something like five things your website should include or providing the healthy body checklist. It could also be something like, free trial, test for a demo, that sort of thing. And the key thing that you want to do with these calls to action is position yourself as the guide or authority. And as the guide, you want to help customers avoid failure. So an example of this would be educating them on the fact that nearly 30% of all homes have evidence of termite infestation. So by educating them, providing this type of information, you're able to say, hey, if you don't act now, uh, the termite infestation might get worse. Uh, so I'm going to help show you the way to overcome that. And ultimately, what you're providing is a successful ending to the story. So an example of this is this book that I wrote called Become a Product Marketing Manager and Earn Over $100,000. A very clear a very specific outcome that can be achieved by following me, the guy, Decker Fraser. So a good successful ending is specific and clear. Another example of a product that I had a lot of success with was learn how to sell websites for $15,000 each. I wasn't just saying learn how to sell your websites for more money. I was very, very specific. By the end of this course, you're going to learn you're going to be able to sell websites for $15,000. And what you want to do is paint a compelling image of an achievable future. 
So that's what you want to think about when you're presenting your imagery, for example, is, is that conveying the future, the desirable outcome? And another key word that you want to keep in mind is transformation. You really want to obsess about your customers' transformations. An example is we will make you a pro in the kitchen and once again, become a product marketing manager. 